Greetings, dear ones. I am Kryon of Magnetic Service. My partner steps aside, as he often does. He removes himself completely. He has to. In order for the purity of the information to be accurate and true without a filter of humanism. The system is beautiful. It is a system of intuition which uses the human's intellect, the brain, all the language skills, and yet without the filter. The God inside comes forward in beauty and benevolence and is allowed to speak. Using your language, and the language which we are going to call and have in the past the third language it has nothing to do with three languages. The third language is a metaphor. The three in numerology is a catalyst. A catalytic number would be that energy which then would change things that come in contact with it. And that's you. Some of you will receive information, even as I proceed, that is completely different than the information that the voice will say. There's an entourage here. It's not what you think. You talk about entities. You might even talk about crying as being a singular entity. It's not. It's not exactly a group, it's a consciousness that brings with it others who are also consciousness and fills the room with love. In a multidimensional way you cannot count what is here for that is a linear operation. But you can sense it. And that's good enough. If you're in love with somebody, do they say, count it? <laughs> they do not. For it represents the essence of an emotion, an energy that has no counting. And that's who we are. I present these things to you because I want to show you some things you didn't expect. I want to show you the glory and the grandness of you. Far beyond just you. What if everything around you, everything, was a system? A system that was planned by your consciousness when you were not here. Listen to me. If you have God inside, to whatever that means to you, whatever that means to you, if you have the essence of the creator inside, that means you were here before creation. I want you to use that part of you which believes that to stand by and validate a few of the things that I tell you. What I'm about to tell you and the story I'm going to give you pieces and parts I have given before. But perhaps not all together and in this way for the reason I'm doing it. There are times when I want to sit in the chair and just celebrate you. Your family. Human beings have a tendency to look up at the Creator and feel less than the Creator. Don't ever do that. For when you are not here in this earthly body, you are part of the creative source that made the earth itself. 
And if you can understand and realize this, you're going to be able to change what you do in the body. You are valuable to the planet beyond belief. You have reason to be here, even if you can't figure it out. I ask you yet again, do you have to know everything to walk forward? Really. And we say it yet again. You use faith every day of your life in so many mundane things, and yet when it comes to your spirituality, you stop and you analyze it. You walk to your, to your auto and you, you get in and you trust it's going to start and go. All of those parts, the workings of perhaps the internal combustion engine, are not yours to know. You don't care. You simply go home. Why won't you do that with God? Why don't you trust the workings that you don't know? I want to enhance this. I want to give you a bigger picture. And as I do this, I want you to sit with me and go back in time. I want you to go back to creation. I want you to go back to the creation of the universe because you were there. You're not just an old soul. For that that will give you an idea of how many lives you've lived. Go beyond that, peace of God. Be a part of creative source, an old part, a part that had no beginning and no end. A circle of reality that always was and always will be. There is only one truth in the universe, and that is God exists. And all that is around it our machinations and shades of the existence of God. For all around you, all you see is God's creation. Everywhere you look, with eyes that were created by God, you see God. But with free choice as a biological person, human being, you have a brain that is allowed to question and figure it out. And that's why I'm here. What I say today is not instructions. They're not revelations. Not really. A celebration of what you might already know. Come with me to the beginning. Dear ones, if you want to know how the universe was created, I will tell you in some ways it always was. There was no such thing as the Big Bang. Your scientists will understand and know that. For the Big Bang is an idea of something from nothing and that is not the way it works. There are multiverses around you. Universes aplenty that are in multi-dimensions even passing through yours. Do not, simply do not try to locate them, find them, or figure it out. It just is. It's part of a beautiful plan of balanced physics. When some of the dimensionality of the universes in the multiverse cross paths in a certain way, a new universe is born. Yours was because of this. Not something out of nothing but something that was designed because other things were there and overlapped. In your case, there were three overlappings. The catalyst created your bang, and you came into existence. On purpose you were. It developed in ways you would not believe faster than it should have, according to what you figured out. Time is relative. You cannot measure it by yours. You cannot even go back and look at light and decide how fast it was going, for it changed too. 
The actual physics that you enjoy is different in parts of the universe than here. How can you ever then take the measuring stick of what you know and apply it to something you don't? Therefore, the timing was different. The reactions were different. Even what you see today and you think you know about was different. But I want to tell you what you didn't expect. With the trillions of galaxies in this universe, we concentrate on yours. And we never talk about the others, ever. For there are things going on in the others just as profound and beautiful and benevolent as yours, but you are in yours. It is so vast by itself, you will never see all of it, unless you're on my side of the veil. It has wonders beyond belief, beauty, colors you cannot see in wavelengths that you only can dream about. It is the creation of God. Dear Creator, you were there and watched it. Time is not important because you don't have any problem with it. It is not in your dimensional reality when you're on my side of the veil. But you can still see the beauty and the light and watch it unfold. Dear ones, your solar system is simply a pinpoint of light within billions of pinpoints of light. And yet here I am with you. I want to tell you about the creation of earth because it was planned. The seeding of your planet approximately 200,000 years ago which lend, lended itself to what you call Lemuria in 50,000 beyond is brand new. I want to take you four to five billion years ago. I want you to watch your planet develop. And as you do, I want to give you some information. And the reason I do it is because I want you to see something. I want you to see a benevolent plan that has created the couch of consciousness and the garden that you inhabit. Something that was never an accident, prepared in advance by the Creator itself for you. So that you will have an idea of the importance of the human being to us. How can I tell you things that you cannot know of or see or that you never discovered? I would like to remind you of something. The creation of earth as described in your most recent scriptures has the metaphor of a seven day creation. These were indeed dispensations of creation, steps of creation, not days. And look at the amount of verbiage given to the creation of earth as opposed to the creation of the universe or each galaxy or the trillions of other earths and stars. And why was it just the story of you? In that which you would call Genesis in the beginning, it wasn't really the beginning at all, was it? It was about you. And the reason that there are not volumes and volumes written about the creation of everything else is because everything else is different than you. You see, you were created by design. Design. The creator is the one who can put together the stars in a certain way. Control and create any part of what you would call that which is matter and mass and physics itself. In order to build that which it needs to build for you. 
beautiful it is. God it is. Picture the earth in its infancy, in its beginning. That is where the story started in Genesis, not with the, not with the bigness of it all. Only a few words about the universe and light, the sun, is all about you. Because the earth is designed. The first design, dear ones, had life occurring on the earth from two suns. Now, you should know this. This is not verified, but will be and is common sense. If you have a planet somehow rotating around a two-star system of any kind, even if it's a complex rotation, you have double, double the chances for the beginning of life. The sun is the giver of life. It is the catalyst of chemistry combined with that on the planet's which would then have amino acids, the electricity of storms, all then to create that which is the building blocks of the kind of life you know. With double the power of the sun, not heat, but the sun, two, it's going to happen quick. One was taken away. Now this is intuitive and you'll even find it in some of the prophecies, in some of the channelings, but you'll find it in a very different way because it has gone to a way that humans like negativity. <laughs> but it was accurate. You lost a son. Now there's a reason for this and it's twofold. Number one, so that life would not develop quickly. It had to come later. You had to sit and wait for it because this planet of free choice needed time for other planets to do what they did before you ever got going. And the second thing is that all life that can travel from planet to planet in this galaxy knows that life will be found around two suns. <laughs> so you hide. For the most part, you have remained hidden from the other life which is able to see you or touch you or travel to see you. And the few that do and have do not necessarily talk to the others. There's no internet in the galaxy. <laughs> what happened to your son? Is it collapsed upon itself and gravity became great? Much of it dissipated and the gases burned off. It never exploded. It simply collapsed. The collapse itself was traumatic absolutely to the earth, but there was no life on the earth. It didn't matter. Part of the earth was cooling. It didn't matter. The rest of it, which was matter and not much matter, became smaller actually than a planet and disappeared. Some have channeled that that planet has a name and it's dark and it still rotates your existing sun. Some have channeled that it hides from you behind the sun and that somehow in some way it's going to get a push to come around and destroy you soon. Now I want to ask you, dear human being with common sense in this new energy, did you come all this way past a marker just to be destroyed? And so I want you to take that information and sort it where it belongs into folklore, mysticism, and things that are not going to happen. Could I be clearer? The magnificence of what you've done does not then go toward destruction by a nameless planet that I will not mention that comes at you from the dark with impossible physics that nobody can see. <laughs> Here you are on a planet with technology that allows you to see small asteroids to travel to them and land on them and you're expected to believe that a planet's going to come out of the dark that nobody knows is going to happen or see and your instruments can't pick up and it's going to hit you and kill you. Common sense. Let it prevail. But you lost a son. 
The earth was hobbled at that point. Life was tough. It was made tougher by the geology of the planet, which kept erupting. <laughs> it didn't quite cool as fast, perhaps, as others around it. Now, it had one sun, and that has something to do with it. It didn't have quite the gravity, it did not have quite the friction that you would have otherwise in other ways that would create some kinds of the heat that you didn't expect. Just to say this, it didn't cool right. Not like some of the others. Uninhabitable, even by microbes. When life got its start, it fizzled. <laughs> didn't work, it wasn't balanced. It started again, and it fizzled. It wasn't balanced. There was something missing. It fizzles, that is to say it dies, because it was not sustainable. It was not self-sufficient. The sparks of life were given five times. <laughs> One sun, it's a tough call. Go ahead and try it. Build a greenhouse, plant your vegetables, and then cover it up with a tarp. And let's watch what happens. <laughs> and then they happened over and over. For whatever reason geologically you want to consider, and I will tell you, there was intelligent design here, the earth would erupt. Thousands of volcanoes would go off at the same time, covering this planet with a dark cloud that lasted thousands and thousands of years. Nothing could grow. No life could happen. The sun was blotted out. The little sun you had wasn't there. Eventually, it took place that the spark of photosynthesis happened. And at the time that life started on this planet and plants started to grow and microbes started to move around, I would like to give you information. At that point in time, Orion and Arcturus were alive and well with humanoids. <laughs> oh, you are slow. That's by design. You had to be stopped from growing too fast because when you appeared and were seated it had to be the right way with the right ones in order to get that which is the magnificence of who you are and where you'd be controlled it was by the creator itself even when you got going and things were good, suddenly there was a collision and you had the moon and you started over. <laughs> and then the volcanoes went off again, wiping away 80% of the life that was there. Here comes the cloud. The beginning of animals, reptiles, disappearing completely, starting over. By then, the Pleiadeans had the life force on their planet. The Pleiadeans is a seven sun cluster. You see seven, you call it seven. That seven cluster is really nine. Some of the brilliance that you see from the earth that you call the suns actually are suns hiding behind the seven that you claim are there. The configuration alone allows life faster than yours. The earth is what you would call a planet in the sweet spot of biology. Just far enough away from the sun, a sun which is a certain size, to be the incubator that you needed for life. But not a very good one at the time. The Pleiadians had more. Not only that, there were three planets that rotated their suns, which they could facilitate and eventually did as their homes. It's very different, dear ones. 
This earth was by design. Life finally got going. And then the asteroids came. <laughs> and wiped it away yet again. Volcanoes went off. And it was covered yet again. It didn't cool very well. Dear ones, it's still not cooled enough. You still have volcanoes going off but it's now appropriate and okay. When life started to take hold as you know it today, it was the beginning of the history that you know of. You don't know what happened before because there's no way to have recorded it. The molten-ness of the planet, the volatility, volatility of it, wiped away every trace of what had happened. You only know what you can see that remained. If you had a way of interrogating the depths of the planet as it churned itself over upon itself, you might actually be able to figure it out and you'd be shocked. It took so long to get going. One billion, two billion, three billion, three and a half billion. By this time, there was life all over the galaxy that was humanoid. And some of them had the creator inside like you do. And they had higher selves and they were working on the puzzles that you were. And you were still microbial. By design, it is beautiful, is it not, how we held it back? So you would not arrive too soon. Now the irony in all of this, dear human being, is that you are not sitting here watching it and waiting it. You see, you had planets of your own. You were working on then. We have told you this before. This is what you do. What you are doing on this planet, some of you are starting to remember you've been through before. That is the intuition starting to kick in and actually create a bridge between your consciousness and your innate and your higher self that starts to reveal what your Akash knows about you in other worlds. We do not encourage you to spend time with this because it will not help you now except for you to realize that it happened before and it turned out well. Why am I telling you this? I want you to know it was designed for you. With love and benevolence and beauty for you. Some of you sitting there wondering, who am I? Why me? Woe is me. With a lack of self-worth is unbelievably strong for a light worker. Because you've been through so many negative things in so many lifetimes and you're expecting it to happen again. I want to tell you, this was designed for you. Because you are magnificent. This is the way it works and always has worked. You were able with free choice to destroy yourself. Never get out of the playground, but you didn't. And wisdom prevailed and now you're in the twilight of an ascended planet by design. Evolution. Now it gets different. Here come the animals that are going to survive, not the dinosaurs. No more extinction. Now we have to get going. And now... We accelerate it. <laughs> and everything that you know about evolution is wrong. <laughs> if you do the computations of how long it would take with the Darwin theory, it would have taken eight to ten times as long. This evolutionary process to bring you to humanism was accelerated massively accelerated and not an average accident. <laughs> when mammals started to occur 
and be on the planet leading then to the primates leading then to where you became in the evolutionary scheme when this started to happen dear ones nature as you know it today was cranking out the things that you see in zoos today and that is nature creates variety for survival how many kinds of deers are there and rats are there or mice are there all of the animals big and small for survival reasons had many variations and varieties and by the way so did the primates so did the humans and occasionally you'll dig up a real tall one or perhaps a real small one maybe you'll even dig up one with a tail that's not you is it 200,000 years ago is nothing nothing if you compared the existence of your planet to a 12 hour clock 200,000 years ago when the Pleiadians seeded you with the consciousness of the Creator is in the last second and a half. And it's right on time. By this time there had been eight other planets of free choice. Billions of years had gone by. The Pleiadians were in their ascended status and had been for thousands of years able to control physics move where they wanted to go with the creator inside of them they were enjoying an ascension status partly biological mostly consciousness difficult to explain all multidimensional and beautiful when they came here what they had to do in the first hundred thousand years was to call out the other kinds of human beings there used to be more than 20 you see some in your biological records maybe as many as 17 there were a lot more than that kinds of human beings all called down to one now I ask you right now where do you see that in nature any other place it was by design it is counterintuitive to evolution. It is counterintuitive to nature. One human being was seated so that one kind of human being could walk through what you walked through in beauty, in frustration, with free choice. We've given you the rest of the story, which we call the history of Earth. Now we gave you the history of the galaxy. <laughs> A design that was elegant you were out of the curve of chance and we say to science right now go prove it for everything you're going to look at will not follow an average at all it'll be outside of the curve of possibility and probability that things happened on this planet the way they happened and the reason is because it was designed for you the beautiful meal called earth was cooked slowly and then at the last minute was accelerated and the salt was put in and here you are at the last minute and the meal is being consumed that is to say is being lived by you and you are about ready to have the meal become the fruition of the consciousness of peace on earth does this put your perspective on another scale of who you are what I have given you is absolute truth of the history of this planet designed conceived and built to be a planet of free choice with one Sun against all odds and against all odds with free choice you just walked through the procession of the equinoxes in 2015 which we call year two you're in the twilight of peace on earth don't 
despair from what you see by those who deliver what they want you to see on the news. For the real news is that this planet is churning with change. And the change is not those who are presenting to you horror and hate. The change is what you cannot see, which is the rest of the planet starting to coalesce and react and decide that they want light. Slow it will be, but don't fret. How long have you waited? How many lifetimes have you slogged through it to get to here? It's human nature that you'll wait a few weeks <laughs> to see a change. <laughs> what about a few generations? You're going to be here, and it's just going to get better. Every single moment that we channel to you, your biology has a chance to ring with the truth of who you are. And in that ringing with the third language is an energy of healing, awareness, beauty, solution to problems that are yours. Don't prejudge how you think it's going to turn out in your life, dear human being, because you don't know what you don't know. The message today, against all odds, the big gamble, wasn't really a gamble at all. For here you sit, having passed this marker. I want you to sit for a moment and feel the congratulations, the benevolence of the Creator inside. And when we say, job well done, we mean it. Because you worked for it. And you earned it. And now I know what's going to happen next. You always have done it. Go do it. It's why we're here. Built for you. The very cosmos knows your name. And so it is. <laughs>